Alrighty guys, so daily shop update again. So today, worked half a day at the shop, we left. In any case, I've been working on Out of Money and Brett's bike. Uh, they are both pretty much at the same stage, actually Brett's got a head start. But uh, Out of Money, I'm at a stopping point. Uh, let's spin you all around. So, tail section's in, everything from here back is done. Uh, he already had decapped upper injectors. I really need to polish better on that. That whole plenum was white fuzzy, so I've been working on polishing it back out. Uh, I need to hook up the Mac valve for the air shifter and the fuel system. Let's see. Fuel lines, I need to get fuel. It needs oil. I need a front brake line, oil pressure sensor, and a 17-2 sprocket, and this bike is dyno ready, ready to rock and roll. I uh, don't necessarily need the sprocket for the dyno, but Anyway, uh, today I went ahead and buttoned up everything in the rear, got the air compressor hooked up, compressed air regulator set, uh, let's see, clutch in, all that good jazz. Anyway, out of money to stand still till this weekend. I'm linking up with him. He's going to get me money for the fuel system, and I'll order all the AN lines and fittings I need and the regulator to get this thing set. He already has the appropriate pump. It's all just sitting over there right now. I just pulled it out to check it. He has the pump for the E85. Brett. Brett has another whole list. So this one hasn't started since I first started it on the Max. This one will start up as soon as I put the tank on. So this one has the fuel system done. Uh, let's see. Let's go through the list. I've got everything under the hump done. Not quite as far in the back because I still have a couple lines to hook up. But I ran out of air fittings. I'm getting those now. So this one needs a hob switch for the air. Air lines need to be ordered. Regulator rectifier needs mounted. Need to lock tight all the reg air regulator fittings. Needs a coolant bled. Uh, the clutch push rod has a slight bend in it. I'm just going to put another one in it. Uh, need an 8th MPT90 for the fuel pressure sensor because I'm going to put the fuel pressure sensor right here off this regulator because there's nowhere else to tap it into the rail. Uh, air shifter needs hooked up, which is just a matter of wiring in the MAC valve, same as that one. And I need to put, oh, a charge pipe clamp. That was what that meant. So that's all I got left. There's not a whole hell of a lot left to do on this thing. I really wish this rail, I thought it did, it had a 1 8 MPT port in the bottom, but it does not. So there you go, big go. I'll have to tap in at the regulator. Normally I just screwed into the rail, but this rail does not have an 8th MPT port. Not a huge deal. Run right around we go. Uh, but this bike starts and runs. This bike, if I throw a fuel system on it, if I stole his fuel system and put it on there, it'd start and run. Uh, let's see, that's it. I haven't touched anything else today. Rolled Jimmy's into the next slot because he's up in line. This weekend, I will be at Laster Mountain Dragway with Eric's bike. I have a jockey lined up. Uh, Jamar Watkins is going to ride it. Eric is bringing apparently a bunch of his bikes. Don't know what all he's bringing. I know he's bringing the yellow turbo. Uh, if you saw on Facebook, that did pop. So, there is no warranty on race engines, guys. High performance turbo engines, nitrous engines, it doesn't matter. There's no warranty. Now, I want to clarify something that I did see on Facebook on that post. I never commented on it or even got involved because it's his business, not mine. So, let me get you set up here. So, on that bike, it ran for a full calendar year. Uh, initially, it was put together. I did make an assembly error on it. And the engine locked. I brought it back here. I went and picked it up, brought it back here, warrantied it, put a new crank in it, put everything in it. What it was is I had a thrust. In my sleepiness, I put him backwards. Okay, it made one pass down the track, and that was it. So he got a brand new crank, and uh, everything rocked and rolled, new bearings, all the good jazz. Anyway, it rocked and rolled for a year. That bike has a habit of killing clutches. If y'all remember way back, that bike does not have a two-step. It does not leave on boost, but it is geared for boost. So it slides the living daylights out of that clutch. It is a terrible setup for that. Because the motor itself only makes like 130 horsepower at best. Because it's low compression, it's 9 to 1. Uh, so there's no warranty. He understands that. I'm going to rebuild it. It has a rod knock now. I have a suspicion that's related to clutch debris. We will be doing a real-time teardown on that motor. Okay? So I will go live on Facebook or YouTube live on YouTube while I'm tearing that down. And y'all get to see me bust that motor down as I go. Uh, it is a bitch to get the turbo off of, but it is what it is. Uh, 
I believe he wanted to get the nitro spike refreshed. It needs refreshed. So the nitro spike is a stock bore, stock stroke GSXR 1000 with a stock head, uh, dual intake cams, titanium retainers, carpenter springs, stainless valves, uh, 12 to 1. It's either 11 7 or 12 to 1. Uh, Carrillo pistons, CP pistons, Carrillo rods, studs top bottom, nitrous cut transmission, all the good jazz. That bike has a crap ton of dope on it. Like a metric shitload of dope on it, and it's a hand clutch. So that bike will be coming back to get a uh, refresh. It at least needs rod bearings rolled in it. Minimum. I need to roll rod bearings in it. They get beat to crap on that thing. It has more nitrous in it than it has motor horsepower. Put it that way. A lot more nitrous than motor horsepower. Uh, see believe the gold turbo is coming but i think that's just for me to show him how to use his boost controller i'd love to get him into a max because the thing people don't comprehend about the max okay when i put a max on a bike generally you don't have to touch shit okay jimmy he touches his nitrous map because he wants to touch his nitrous map although i'm going to set that up with multiple nitrous maps now uh his turbo bike has three tunes in it it has a 510 tune and then two spicier tunes that may or may not work depending on the track. I know one of them works now on a good-ish track. But uh, it's got three tunes that he can choose from. And if he emails me, I'll send him three new ones. And he can play for quite a while with those, right? It's easy to just open an email, plug in, write to ECU, and you're done. But what people don't grasp is that most all of these bikes have multiple tunes, right? Brett's is a good example. That's his Raptor. Anyway. His mode down button changes. So you have mode one, that's boost mode one, mode two, and mode three. Okay. That's what he's got available. Those are presents that are already pre programmed. Same on this bike. This bike's configured the exact same way. Doop, doop, doop. Dude. So this gentleman won't even need to know how to use the max on this bike because I can't turn it up beyond where I'm going to put bo boost mode 3. Uh, it's a non-intercooled stock rod motor, so I'm limited to, I'm going to say probably 16 pounds of boost. 16, 17 pounds of boost is where I'm going to stop. Uh, I have his boost cut set at 20, which should be like close to 400 horsepower, which I don't want to do. Uh, I'll probably wind up turning that down. But anyway, I'll have a wastegate tune, a mid tune, and a fast tune. Uh, but that's what people don't get on the max is they think it's going to be so much work to learn how to manipulate it and use it and the little bit you need to learn how to use i can teach you in about 10 minutes uh, anything beyond that is getting so into detail where there's a reason i provide free support for them after the fact right you can send me a data log i can send you a tune-up or i can remote in and i can adjust things as i go and i just kick bolts everywhere so I'd really love to get him into a max on the gold bike at least. If not the yellow bike, the yellow bike would be wicked. Because both of those are editor bikes. I hate editor. That was an editor bike. In two days I got it on a max. Uh, if I was leaving it on C16, I would have just left fuel system and it'd be done. Uh, but because I'm not leaving it on C16 and I'm putting it on E85 flex fuel, uh, which both of these are flex fuel bikes, I had to delete the ABS to make room for a flex sensor, and I had to switch everything from rubber lines to PTFE. So that's the only thing holding it up. Uh, otherwise, I'd go this weekend and race it. To be honest, I could probably could just throw a fuel system on it, put it on C16, and go race it this weekend. Uh, but yeah, that's my rant. Uh, I do have an individual on here. If you made it this far, hey, bud, uh, who is stalking me because he purchased Jamie Johnson's bike second hand uh, he says I block my customers so on and so forth uh, he's not a customer uh, one of the first com communications we had he spoke to me and said hey I'll pay you for your time if you help me out and we started talking and I said that's fine cool and I started helping him giving him advice giving him feedback about a week in he ain't sent me no money he ain't suggested to send me no money and I got about three or four hours of phone conversations at that point, I realized he was just going to milk me. Then he started complaining about the bike, right? So he popped an airline and burned up an air compressor. Well, when an air compressor doesn't have a way to shut it off, it'll do that. Jamie's bike was set up that way. 
Uh, the air compressor on there was a cheap piece of shit. Well, here's the deal. Jamie had a really nice brushless compressor on there, right? It didn't take the abuse of the vibration very well, and it burned up. So I went and ordered an MPS naked compressor. That's what that was. It was MPS takes a little 12-volt socket compressor, and they gut it out, and you have an exposed gear compressor. That was what was in there, but apparently that was some hack job junk. Uh, the bodywork was loose. Uh, let me touch base on that. When it left here, it had a custom wrap. When you got it, it was plain black. So, obviously, the bodywork had been removed in between. Uh, the gas tank didn't sit down right. It was a shitty fit-up. That was Monster Turbo's plenum. The gas tank fitment, the plenum fitment, all that was prior to me. I just installed the Max, tuned it, and set up all the boost by gear and all that. Right? So, the initial build wasn't me. The engine was not me. Okay, I put cams in it, but beyond that, the base of the engine was not me. The turbo system was not me. The uh, bulk of the wiring was me, the max was me, that's about it. Okay, I did not do a whole lot to that bike. Oh, it's got shitty LEDs on it. That was by request of a customer. Okay, so it goes on and on. Same with uh, another individual who got on that Facebook group, bud. He, uh, he is not allowed in the shop because I held his bike and stored it for two years. Well, his wife was sick and he did not have the money to purchase the parts to continue the build. I didn't charge him a penny for the storage. Three weeks after he got the money for the parts, I had the Max in the bike, bike fired up and ready to go to the dyno. And he started blowing me up, saying I was hiding his bike, keeping it from him, da-da-da-da-da. I stole his turbo, which I had sent off to comp and got remanufactured. Serial number still matched, still have the receipts. Uh, just in case he decides to sue me, I still have the receipts. But that isn't even the same turbo he saw posted on freaking Facebook, right? He saw a Turbonetic black turbo posted on Facebook. He has a comp oilless black turbo. And it's still on the bike. Uh, but anyway, he was asked to come get his bike and get it the hell out of here. And attitudes like that will always result in that. I am mm, keeping my business filter on, but I'm keeping it to a minimum. There's still going to be times where I tell people to fuck off, and that is a fuck off moment. Uh, nagging me, nitpicking me, we'll do that. Okay? Uh, if you want to guide your build and run it the way you want to run it, build it yourself. There's several people who are doing a great job of it, so enjoy, and I'll give you feedback. You want to buy a build sheet from me i'll sell you a build sheet with all the part numbers and specifications i would do for a motor or whatever but uh don't expect me to stand behind it when you assemble it uh same with modifying your bikes i have a few people who do that too when it comes back for a running issue and i find that it's got a different fuel pressure regulator on it and it's plumbed backwards yeah you'll get that so <laughs> anyway i'm on a tirade y'all have a beautiful day i'm waiting for a customer for the next 4.30, I will be here for another three and a half hours.